Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. I'm Tracy. I am Carol. And we are my Alan Purgatory. Ah. So, yeah, it's the morning after. Actually, it's the afternoon after, but, you know, whatever. Oh, I feel so dirty. I know, right? Right? So, we have watched, we came, we saw, we watched, we loved. Um, I'm sure everyone at this point has seen episode one of the Outlander TV series on Stars. Let's hope so. If you haven't, know, turn right? us off and go watch it. Now, I will say this, like, spoiler alert, um, right off the bat, we are going to try to keep this as spoiler free in terms of anybody, you know, obviously we welcome people who do not know who we are. Um, we are my Island of Purgatory. We're a, a fan site, blog, Twitter, Facebook. On it's the thing of we are. We are. We are. This book. Well, um, um, and uh, so so we do talk about all the books and we're, you know, whatever. We have a chat on Monday nights, whatever. But we're going to try to keep this like, like spoiler free as possible for people who don't know all the books and don't necessarily know what's going to happen even in this first book. Um, we will have to like you know, um, violate that policy at some points, but we'll make it clear that we're about to. So you can just like turn down the sound or whatever. We will warn you. Yes. Yes. So anyway, before we talk, before we get, and we're, we're going to try to do this every week and get a recap video up on every Sunday at some point. We don't know what time on Sunday, you know, fingers crossed. But before we start the recap for this first episode, we need to recap a couple weeks back the first time we saw it because... We, Carol and I, um, went to a, an event that they had in New York at the 92nd Street Y. Um, this was very similar to the red carpet event that they had at San Diego Comic-Con. Um, they had had that, like, Friday, and this was the following Monday. So, at the event were, um... I just wanted, I just wanted to say that we, we kind of, we really were back and forth about going to Comic-Con and going to the premiere out there or not, and... <laughs> Kind of cheaped out. <laughs> well, we did. We got an invitation. You know, thank you very much, stars. We really appreciated it. Oh my god, it was awesome. We really wanted to be there, but we're across the country, and it's just it's yeah. tough. We we really thought about like sleeping in the airport. We really did. We were that. <laughs> we were that yeah, desperate. Yeah, I know. We were gonna do it. We were gonna our car- Comic Con. There were no hotels. Yeah, there were no hotels. There was no room at the end. Yeah. So it was basically like chair at the airport, or you know, they got to we could have driven um, up to L.A., blah, blah, blah. Whatever, we decided whatever, against but, so this it, especially along. once we found out about New York. So we were like, you know what? Mm, mm, yeah. yeah. So this came along, and, um, you know, it was like, great. This is, like, in our backyard. It's really easy to do. Excellent. So we went to it. So Diana was there. Ron was there. It was great. You know, we didn't actually get, get a chance to interact with them. They were kind of in and out. They were in and out of that S. They're in and out. They're they're kind of like, I mean, they've been doing this a lot longer than the actors, I think. So they're probably like, yeah, we're really over this now. We have nothing more to say. Hi, bye. Like, (laughs) whatever. Um, But also there were Sam Hewen, Katrina Balf, and Tobias. I was about to say Tobias Tuesday. (laughs) And Tobias Menzies. Um, We'll, like, nutshell the story because there was a lot of, like. Yeah, terrifying. What? What? Carol, you might be a little frozen. No, you're all right now, I think. Let me say. All right, we're on. All right, so a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a snafu, I guess. Um, I had to change locations and I'm on an Ethernet cable now, so hopefully the signal will be just a little better. Okay. Um, I'm also trying to make Carol smaller, so I actually... Don't stare at myself. And I'm trying to get Outlander on. Um, okay. All right. So we don't have too much time today. So we have to, like, rush. Come on. Push. Okay. So anyway. So where were we? We were in New York. This is Christy. Her overpass. Sorry. We were in New York. We were in New York. Okay. So Diana and Ron, you know, didn't really do the crowd thing. Let's just say that Tobias, Sam, and uh, Katrina did do the crowd thing. After deciding, like, where should we go, where should we go, where should we go, we finally just stood sort of where this area was kind of gated off. These, like, Oh, my you know, God, like cattle. Limo, these, like, limo, um, you know, like, SUVs, whatever, the pull up. black escalator. And out they walk. Yeah. So, 
you guys have seen like a million pictures, I am sure, and video, whatever. But in terms of what happened with us, okay, I would say the first person we encountered was one Tobias Menzies, who was actually outside the like, you know, gated area that they were supposed to stand in. He was with the unwashed masses, you guys. He was well, that, and with that's us. why I don't have a picture because I didn't want to attack the poor man. Well, we have but, pictures of him like signing stuff for people. He the was par- signing, and 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 then I, he, it was like all of a sudden there he was right in front of me, and I just, it was like I oh. had no, I I had no choice but to verbally vomit. <laughs> it was just verbal vomit coming out of my mouth. So he didn't sign anything. You know, we just like talked to him for a minute. Mostly Carol did, and Carol said the following. We started to buy the two. <laughs> and he was like this. He, he was, he was really? not rude at all. No, he was lovely. He was, he was lovely. Not, I don't even mean rude. Like when I, when I um, carried a watermelon with Ron Moore, he was kind of like, but he was, he was probably tired because it was a long day. But Tobias just went with it. He was like, and I said, and then it's, it's hitting me as I'm saying like, oh, not. Mm. <laughs> And I said, don't worry, we're not stalkers or anything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that was pretty much it. But, and um, you know what, Tracy? Did what? we, at any time, did we mention to, to Tobias or Sam or even Kate, who we didn't get to say hello to, did we at one time say, my Outlander Purgatory? No. No, we didn't. No, I think we did with, with Sam. I don't think we did. I don't remember. Um, none of them seemed to recognize us from our videos, but there was like a million people there. A lot of whom did recognize because us, which they're is sitting awesome. home Because they're sitting home watching our videos on a Friday night I with a glass of I water. Think, Are you I kidding? think they've seen them. Sam, Katrina, Tobias, if you were watching this video, give us a sign. Give us a sign. Tweet us or something that you have seen us on video and, like, at least thought we were mildly humorous. But anyway, my, my, my part of that whole story with Tobias is that, you know, we probably walked, like, he probably was walking off. We were like, good luck, da 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 and I touched his shoulder. <laughs> I touched his shoulder. He was wearing a suit, and I just thought, you know, good fucks, like you're doing whatever. Okay, yeah, I'm not that awesome. bad. Okay, but anyway. I, so. And let me just say this. Let me just say this. I'm not that bad, but I was thrilled that I got to, like, speak to the man face-to-face, and there weren't five million people, like, here, and I have to tell you that that man has beautiful eyes. He really does. They I mean, do the not. Thing. They do not come across on camera. And I was just watching my favorite series of all time, Rome, the other night, and there he was. And he's so young in that; it's so cute. And I'm just looking at him, and I'm like, his his the in person that you get when you're standing in front of him does not. I mean, he's adorable on camera, but he's just he's just like a, absolutely. He's got sparkling eyes. I'm gonna stop now because I'm gushing. Bye. But nothing else sparkles. He's not like Edward or anything. So okay. <laughs> he just he seems like a cool guy. I don't he know. just seems like a really nice guy. But okay, so then so he so then he makes his way into like the the you know protected area, and they're all like wandering around the perimeter of the protected area signing stuff. Well, we forgot to mention that with Carol and I and Carrie, hi Carrie, we that was fun like to hang out with Carrie and Carla, hi Carla, um, and a whole bunch of and other Jane. people. Um, was our friend Pocket Jamie. So, you know, we've got the Pocket Jamie, and we actually had a picture taken with, oh, are we going to get an appearance here? Pocket Jamie apologizes that his guilt is coming off. (laughs) Yeah, and America's like, no apology needed. Um, But, so, Pocket Jamie actually got his picture taken with the Wee Doppelganger, which was actually the first time Carol and I had ever seen one of the wee doppelgangers, um, and held it in our hands. If somebody would like to send us one, you know, ours, that would be Yeah, great. after you pay nine ninety nine. No, we're not paying nine ninety nine for one. You could maybe just like send us like, you know, tweet us and we'll give you our address. Um I'm, anywho, I'm, I'm, I'm dressing public <coughs> Amy right now. Anywho, we see Sam and it clicks, I think for both of us. Oh my god. The pocket Jamie moment with you know, big Jamie must happen and it must happen now. So, and I was like, I don't give a shit. Like what kind of a fool I look like right now. This is going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Tracy carried her own watermelon. I, uh, I like, I'm uh, sorry. No, no. You're abusing me for carrying a watermelon and you're throwing <laughs> a Barbie doll in Sam's face. Look, he's like, they all seem really nice, but like, let's put it this way. 
And, you know, maybe we'll be lucky enough someday to interview them or chat with them a little bit. But, like, come on. Like, our, you know, we're, like, we, we, we're, we're, we appreciate their work. It's not like they're coming over for dinner tomorrow. So. Is there something know. wrong with me that I really don't even, I've, I've never even tried to interview anybody. I just, I don't know. I just. I don't, I don't, oh, I would like to. I have, I, I, I want to interview Tobias because I just, I want to spend, I could spend hours talking about how, and this is my actor even that's coming out. Like, like his physicality as Frank versus Blackjack could spend hours talking about it, but that's, we'll get to that. Um, so anyway, so, so we're like, we're like, Sam, Sam, Pocket Jamie's here. Oh, and we'll we even have to Pocket Jamie, so like cool. whatever, whatever. Well, he sees it and he comes over and we're like, like sticking in his hands basically. And okay. Like, okay. Wait. Okay. You're Sam. Ready, everyone? Okay. Go. <laughs> So, so we're like, oh my God, somebody better be taking pictures right now. And then I had my phone. So we're like, selfie, selfie. And we're taking selfies, selfies, selfies. He loved it. He was like, this is awesome. Like, this is hilarious. And he was like totally into it. Yeah. He's a very cool guy. You can tell like he appreciates all of it and and is just running with it. He's so mellow. I'm so sad that we really... We were all Tobias and Sam, and then I see the show, and I'm like, why didn't we get a picture? I know. And I got to say, like, I mean, it never will happen, but I really would like to just, you know, you know, hang out with them, have a drink with them, because they're, well, just, I'm just they're saying, really, like, accessible people. They're, like, not, you know... Right. But but Katrina just seems... I keep saying they all seem cool, but, I mean, there she was, and I didn't even get... I didn't even think. I didn't yell. I'm like, oh, my God, why didn't we meet her? She is the bomb! Katrina is a purgatory girl. I'll get it. I got to be honest with you. I was very um, Tobias, 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 because I've seen the man in many things. But now that I've seen the two of them, holy crap, they're both awesome, and she is <coughs> just beyond. Okay, she, let's she's go. She's great. She's great. Speaking yeah. of how good she is, let's get going on that. Let's. All right. So, so we saw the episode that night. Um, each of us have watched it. I watched it with my husband, who liked it, but was like, "Why do all the Scots like? Why do they? Why do they? Why don't they talk in Gaelic all the time?" Like, why are they talking English sometimes? I'm like, because they live in, you know, the England or the UK or whatever. And so probably most of them kind of, you know, know the English or whatever. So that's that was the question I got. Okay. I um, saw it at the 92nd Street Y first. Then when it was available um, for download, my husband and I watched it at like 10 o'clock in the morning because he seriously couldn't wait. His um, He is Scottish and his uh, grandfather <coughs> was Paisley. And, um, you know, he grew up with him, so uh, he, he's just, he's got a lot of Scottish uh, in his background, and so he couldn't wait to see it, absolutely loved it, watched it again with me that night. When I watched with the girls, I brought my girlfriends over, we were at a party, and we all went, hey, let's go to Carol's and watch this. They all came down, and Tom's like, I'm going to watch it with you again, do you mind? And poured us all a wee dram, and we all sat there. With our scotch, watching Alan and I was kind of like, ooh, I can't really say what I want to say in front of Tom, can I? Right. But <laughs> um, I did not watch with the girls. I just watched the one time with you and the one time with John. And then last night I really did watch with the girls because I watched I, – I wasn't home for the East Coast version. So I watched the West Coast version and live tweeted it with all the girls on Twitter. And it was awesome and totally fun. So okay. let's go. All, all right. right. So – and I'm I'm kind of looking at my Twitter from last night just to see what I really liked. Um, I love that the very 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 opening shot is the prologue. Love it. Like just really real overall really good use of um, of um, the, of the book of like like a great adaptation. You know exactly. Great adaptation. I loved the whole opening sequence before the credits because you learned in that little World War II thing you learned so much about Claire. Right, um, very well done. I didn't notice at the beginning when we saw it the first time that um, they like you know she's like saving the guy's life or whatever, and then like the you know the guy doctor like gets in there, he's like, all right, step and aside. she's like, um, right, and right. I didn't notice that the first time, and I was I like, didn't, yeah, I didn't <clears> that, that tells you like so much right there. Yeah, until later when she's barking at like Rupert and and Dougal, and they're like. And then I went, oh, now I get it. That's why they had to show the audience exactly how she is when she's trying to save someone. Don't mm-hmm. come in between Claire. Don't F with Claire. Yeah. And her, like, you know, life-saving skills. Right, right, um, right. Her mad skills. Um, but the end, then, you know, then you, you see that she she can hold her own with the best of the boys in terms of, like, the the, uh, 
the the uh, drink and the champagne. Right. Um, you know, she could probably like beat all comers at quarters. I think if she needed to. Um, you know, yeah, you just you learn a ton of stuff about her in that like little two minute thing, which was great. Um, so so they flash back to World War Two, and then um, the whole little thing with the vase, which was another like little detail. But I was just so glad they kept it in. It was really, it just really worked. It really worked. So then Carol, I caught something. Once it starts, opening credits, great, whatever. I think you missed this because if you opening hadn't seen credits, this, great, whatever. That song is fantastic. It was in my head all day yesterday. The, the opening oh, sequence is so beautiful. Oh, I don't know what to do with myself. I know. I want the soundtrack I'm now. I'm so Like, I cry when I Daddy, see... I, I, I want the soundtrack perfect. now! I have it on right now, so I'm... Um, okay, Carol, I don't think you caught this because you would have said something about it, and I caught it just last night, my third viewing. Fast forward, the, just show, the, show, show Claire and Frank in the car and watch Frank. Uh, not hard to do. Okay, watching him right now. Just watch him. Are they getting out of the car yet? Did you miss it? Uh, you, yeah, I turn it back because... He, he does this little wink at her. This little, like, what I call the winky-winky thing. Like, not even like a... But just like a... Oh, yeah, he just did it. I was like, oh, I never caught that before. That's adorable. That's adorable. It's adorable. It was totally cute. It was totally cute. Okay. So, all right. So they get, you know, they get to Mrs. Barrett, who I loved. Mrs. Barrett, somebody on Twitter was like, she was like, yeah, it's Mrs. Doubtfire. Mrs. Like, Doubtfire. It's totally Mrs. She Doubtfire. Totally, I, I kept expecting her to say, I know you. What did she say? Oh, Lucy oh. Goosey. But I ran out of oh, dearie. <laughs> I, she was totally Mrs. Doubtfire. Totally Mrs. Doubtfire. But, like, adorable. I could listen to her all day. Um... So, you know, they go up to the room, and they're, like, bouncing around on the bed. That was so cute. I loved it. Like, the whole thing was just, Frank is just so, so much, like, more, you know, attractive, and, like, you can, you get what she sees in him more, I think, than you do in the book. Right, right. But let me tell you what the show is really doing well. They're making you realize, or remember, not realize, but they're, they're making you keep it in mind that these people are post-war. This is not easy for right, either right, one of them, right, but right. especially not him. The things he's had to do, the things he's seen, and, and sending people in behind enemy lines and all of this, this poor man is, like, tortured and holding it together right now, and right. I never really thought of it that way when I was reading the books. Right, right. And she is, too. I mean, think back to the to the World War II um, scene. Right, but you interesting. Know? Do you think Claire's able to handle... God, this brings up so much cool stuff. Do you think Claire's able to handle it better or, or able to just jump right back into real life because of her upbringing with Uncle Lamb? Maybe. Yeah, that's a really good point. I, I think, think so. she was so used to the cray cray that she's she like. She probably saw all, all sorts of shit like going on. And, yeah. you know, it was like, um, yeah, Her no, that's actually, fitness. that's a really good point. That's a really right. good point. Um, but here's a question that I had yesterday. So Frank starts to say something when they're, they're jumping on the bed, right? Frank starts to say something. And she's like, no, don't he say says, it. He says, Claire. And Claire. she's like. And she's like, she shuts him right down. Right. So what's he going to say? I don't think it matters right now. May I think it was the whole, he was about to launch into the whole, you know, um, it wouldn't be unusual for you to have been with somebody else. You think, you know, you think he was going to say that? Well, they're jumping on the bed and, you know, it's kind of like they're alluding to the fact of what they're going to do. And next thing you know, he starts in with that and she shusses him up like, oh, hush. And, you know, I found that, there he is, he's bouncing. Um, I found that interesting, and it, but but that did bring back my feelings <clears throat> about Frank from the book, because I was like, "What about you, Frank? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. like what you know? And you're going to ask me this? What have you been doing while we've been gone for the past five years? He's so on her about what she's been doing while he's gone. Well, what has he been doing while she's gone? Um, yeah. And every, I've seen this now four times, and every time I go, and you, Frank? 
They don't Which, really allude to the fact that Frank has skeletons in his closet, though. They really don't. They really, they, I mean, Frank is really I made just to think look- it's, like, chauvinistic or something. Like, what, what do you mean, what has she been doing? Frank, I don't hear you offering up anything about what you've been doing the past five years, either. So, hush. He's really being made to look less, like, duplicitous and more just kind of, like, dull, slightly dull, really nice guy. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. You know? I, I did run into somebody. In, I ran into somebody uh, in the grocery store this morning um, who said, I watched Outlander. And I was like, and what'd you think? And this is a um, 50-something-year-old man. And he said, I liked it. He said the first half hour was a little slow, but he said, I, I thought it was good. Because I'm finding, I'm very, very interested in what people who haven't read the books think. Mm-hmm. You know, and I did think that about, here we go again with Frank, the first 50 pages, and the brandy on the veranda. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, you know, but it's like, you gotta push through, you gotta get through it. And but I thought I'm was... looking forward to seeing Frank flashbacks yes, yes, going agreed. forward. Agreed, agreed. All right, so moving on from all that. So then they go to Castle Leoc, which I, I mean, we knew that this was happening like months ago, but it's Can still... I interrupt you for a what? second? I'm sorry. No, it's okay. How about this whole, like, the foreshadowing that's going on left and right? How about him thinking about the lines on her hand? And Ooh, I didn't even get that, really. I'm like, but... I love the whole mystical stuff that's happening in this show. Okay, go. Okay, so they go to Castle Leoc, which I just thought was just so smart and so, like, oh, yeah. to have her. Because she's kind of going to be, no, she's going to know where she is a little bit. Like, right. now that she's back in the... In which the... I'm sure that was done for a reason. That was, we will figure it out at some point. That that was done for a reason. Oh, yeah. Well, no. I mean, it, it makes a lot of sense because she'll be able to kind of use what she learned even right. in, you know, a half hour at this castle. Right. To sort of, like figure out where she is or whatever. But she's in her surgery. But she doesn't know it's a surgery. Tracy, what did she learn in her half hour at the castle? Well, we might need to discuss one small change from the book. Um, I don't know. Could it have something to do with... Yeah, yeah, it certainly was waiting for her. All right, we have to break this down and we have to say a little bit of a spoiler alert because we're going to talk about something that happens a little bit later than the book or I guess maybe doesn't happen now. <laughs> um, it's just going to be very interesting to see where they go with that because for me, that was a really important detail. The fact that she hadn't, she and Frank hadn't, gone south of the border ever because it 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 was the, the one like little thread of intimacy that she didn't have with frank that she had in like two seconds with jamie right so, so it'll be very interesting what it did show and it showed probably a lot more than in the books is that you know she's she's large and in charge my friends like she is like yo no frank uh frank Give me, give me a Frank. Give me Did a Frank. Here's, here's how it's going to go down. Um, <laughs> Literally. She was driving the bus. <laughs> she was driving the number five heading downtown. <laughs> she was directing traffic. <laughs> Didn't you see my girl? She goes, goes over to mwah, 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 and she goes. So, I mean, I guess like that, like, like highlighting that aspect of Claire's character which is a very important aspect and you know, that she knows what she's doing, I yes. guess is, um, you know, maybe that's taking, that's trumping any sort of like, like, well, you know, we didn't, Frank and I didn't have this sense of intimacy. And honestly, it's making the choice. It's, it's making the choice a little, even, even less clear for viewers, you know? Right. Because but you could see that, you could see that detail from the books and be like, Oh, well, clearly, you know, you're close to Jamie then. I mean... Yeah, but you know what? It's kind of a stupid conclusion to draw, but it's it, there. Now it's even more like... I, I don't know. It's very interesting to see how that's going to play out, or if it's going to play out at all. I do not... I think the reason that was done is twofold. Number one, Ron told us in October in New York City that you have to want her to get back to Frank. Right. So that's number one. 
Okay, so you're not like, oh, Frank, loser. You won't even. They have to make Frank look awesome. <clears throat> Boy, did they? <laughs> and and number two, this is once again. This is something that matters in the book that doesn't, you're not going to, it has to do with your eye and the screen. You are not going to see the details of this on screen. You're going to see a lot on screen from what I've read, but you're not going to see, you know, we're not talking about porn here as far as that uh -huh. with the two of them. Okay. If this was the kind of thing, like Claire never wore a yellow sweater um, in the, in the books because she hated the color yellow you know they could they could sort of show that this is stuff that's not going to matter. Given I don't I, well I don't know that I agree with that they only of the part that they you know wouldn't like show that or get into it because clearly they did. But like, what does it matter in in the books? It matters because it makes Frank seem more stuffy. They can't make Frank seem stuffy or as stuffy as right. he. Right, no, and that makes sense. That makes sense. And the no, point it, is, it was, is that really gonna is is that one thing going to Make her go, for the love of God, Jamie goes downtown. I'm staying. <laughs> no, of course not. Of course not. So, but it's just, it was, it did signify a degree of intimacy. And she even says it in the books. That like, you know, you know, Frank and I were pretty comfortable with each other. But this was the one thing that like, yeah, you know, wasn't I know, really I know. But so again, I'm just, and I don't, mind, I don't necessarily mind the change. I don't mind the change. I'm just curious to see where it's going to lead or if it's going to lead at all. I I am witness firsthand the, the the written word does not always transfer to the screen. I thought you were witnessing something else, and I was like, "What?" Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> the, the bottom line is, what <clears throat> on that script or what's in that book, you are just not always able to get it on the screen properly. So I don't. I did not. I I didn't have a problem with this. I know this was the one thing. I can't believe the one thing out of episode one that all the fans talked about in terms of maybe being like not annoyed, but like wow, that's not in the book. What's going on? And all of this detailed conversation over Frank going down. Right. Well, it's not just that it wasn't. It's not in the book. It's that it very clearly was stated. Like, like it made, it made, a, the book made a point to state that it was not in the book. If, you know, if that makes any sense at all. I, I, you know what I mean? It's not just like they went to Castle Leoc when they didn't in the book. Right. You know? Oh, 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 and look what's happening now. Oh, okay. Um, so anyway, what else? Um, all right. So they go to Castle Leoc and then, um, is that do they do they go to um yeah then they go to rev the reverend the reverend's next i think yes and were you the one who pointed out the fact that claire was no i think it was one of my girlfriends plant said claire was none i think it was mary Kay. claire was none too happy in the book that she was being taken to the kitchen while the men had their conversation she got to go to the kitchen and have her coffee out of the way like like a good girl, you know what I mean? Like the women have the women folk have right. to go into she the kitchen. She says something in the show though. She has a line that makes me think like she's not annoyed. She's just like, you know, sure, yeah, sure, what else is new? Whatever. Well, she's asked to go and she's like, Oh, absolutely. And I think it was Mary Kay, my girlfriend said. <clears throat> um, she was not too happy about that in the book, but whatever. Again, there is like nothing that bothered me that it was in the book and it wasn't on the screen or vice versa. Mm -hmm. So keep going. It's a good scene, and then Frank sees the ghost. And actually, before that, I, I put this on Twitter, but you'll appreciate it, that, like, Claire, first of all, probably didn't need that Jesus H. Roosevelt Christ, like, like I, that little scene with her brushing her hair. To, to, it was fun to see her, like, like, fighting with her curly hair. Of course, me, all I was like was like, put down the brush! Put down the brush! No, no, no! Um... But I got the sense that they kind of threw that in just to like tell you that she says Jesus rose about Christ. Jesus yes, Christ, you know. absolutely, yes, and and that he was watching her while she's at her feistiest with her hair. Right, 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 right. I have to say, I wasn't. I have nothing to complain about, believe me. But I was a little surprised that he wasn't a little bit more defined. You know, he's in the dark. It was almost hard to tell he was in a kilt. Like at first, when you're watching this, you're like, we know mm -hmm. who he is and what it is, and or, or we think we know who he is. Mm -hmm. But we know he's in a kilt. We know he's an old Highlander. You know what I mean? He's in mm -hmm. full Highland regalia. We know all of that. But 
I just kind of felt like there was something behind him. And I was like, can you really, can the audience, I was worrying the whole time about the non fan mm-hmm. sitting there watching. Does this person who's never read the books understand that that's a Highlander? You know what I mean? And Probably. then you figure it out eventually. They're wearing a kilt at that point. Like it's like guy in a kilt, you know, Scott, whatever, like, like traditional Scott. Right. You know, <clears throat> so then, so, uh, Frank goes back and they talk and then you get the whole, like, you know, I'd be all right if you would, you know, if something had happened. Blah. Um, and then you, then, they get, to, then, then they get busy. Head. Then they get busy. She, did um, you see, did you see her? She was none too happy. Yeah. I thought her performance was great, say, I mean, by the she, way. Let's give her some props. I mean, she's in every scene. And oh. I thought she was fabulous. And I you really know what? did. You never once got sick of her. No. I have to say, love the Hunger Games, love Jennifer Lawrence, but in the second one, I was like, oh my God, Jennifer Lawrence is burned into my retina. Like, I was not like that at all with Kate. Like, she was awesome. Yeah, she's great. And she's really, like, she has just all these really subtle reactions on her face. Yes. Um, that, like... You know, they they chose a lot of shots that were sort of that were closer rather than further, so they really did get these really subtle, yeah. subtle like fantastic reactions. She's got a million different expressions. Yeah, yeah. Love her. No, Love her. she's Love great. Her. Um, so all right, then they go to you know they go to Stones, ladies dance around. Um, that was awesome. It was it was shot really the whole thing that was way, shot really well. I I couldn't remember from the book. Did they do that in the book? Dance around. Did they get up and wasn't that from um, Voyager that we that we knew about? Not Voyager. Spoiler. Ooh ooh ooh. Sorry. Well, no, you didn't say anything yet. But now, did did, no. did we see them get up and go spy on these dancing figures? Yeah. Why yeah. don't I remember that? And it, I it was way about- early in the morning. It was way early in the morning because um, that's where they do it. Like they do it after all the ladies leave. Not in Castle Leoc. Like, they do it there. In the books. It's not really a big spoiler, so whatever. I gotta um, read this again. No, I they get it, because that. that's where Claire sees it the first time. That's where she sees it the first time. And then she's like, oh, yes, I, I want to go back. And we weren't, we weren't able, I wasn't able to go get the plant, so I want to go get it again. And he's like, yeah, you know, all right, go, I'll see you later. Except I won't for a while, but whatever. Um... So that was interesting. Oh, and wasn't that beautifully done? Their yeah. last kiss. Yeah. The slow motion. Oh my god. Oh, I, oh. I know. I know. The, oh, I know. I know. I know. I know. Um, and very interesting because, like, you know, if you haven't read the book, you don't know that it is yet. But yeah, very, very meaningful. Um, so then, all right. So you know, she goes back. She goes through. What did you think about the the going through? I liked it. Somebody, I can't remember who, was not thrilled with the, <clears throat> thought it wasn't overwhelming. I thought it was um, perfectly, um, I just, I liked the cut to black. And then talking about her in the car crash. Talking I about liked, her in the car crash, I thought that was, again, yeah, beautifully yeah. done. I don't, don't think we needed all kinds of, because really, you don't really know. I mean, Donna Gabaldon, who's so descriptive, Yes, you read this thing when you're reading it about how crazy it is and all mm-hmm. the noise. and But honestly, I thought it was done perfectly with the car crash. Mm-hmm. I, I Yeah, I agree. I mean, I've heard a lot of people, too, being like, you know, they didn't make it like, you know, um, it wasn't effective or it wasn't like, you know, disturbing enough or whatever. And it's like, well, what do you want? Like, do you want like, or, you know, some sort of like Wayne's World kind of like, you know, like, or what's his name from Soap? <laughs> um yeah no there's there's no there's no good way you're gonna do it so touch it cut to black love it right. i thought it worked really well but i have to say the most ridiculous thing is distracting me every time and that is wow they really cut to black for a long time is the fact that her she left her shawl and everybody who watches it with me everyone i've watched it with says she left her shawl i, I thought mean, the same thing yesterday I, it just bothers me. I'm like, g- g- go back for that. <laughs> I will say this. She was a little too perfectly laid out on the shawl. Yeah, with the yeah, shawl, yeah. like, stretched out in a perfect triangle. And she's like this, with her hair perfectly spilled onto yeah. it. Like, yeah, yeah that, that was a little... 
I get it. Like it was, it was, you know, it was for the shot sake, whatever. Yes, but yes. like, yeah, but I, I do th- love, I love this more than life itself. Speaking of her hair, that it doesn't, nothing bugs me in TV or film more than like something that's about an every woman, but yet her hair has been like meticulously curled with a curling iron and she's like, you know, getting like coming out of the gym. Perfect looking one. Claire right. looked like. It looked like Kat, it looks like Katarina like did her hair herself. Right. It looks and like, went on set. I mean, I I love that. It doesn't look bad. It just looks normal. You know. It, it looks. It looks. Um. It looks real. Yes. Yes. Exactly. It just. It looks real. Yes. Um. What was I just gonna say? You know what <clears throat> really struck me? Uh, that never struck me in the books. I never. How many times have I read Outlander and I've never been scared? I watch this and I see her come to the realization that her car is gone and fear creeps up. And I'm thinking, what would you do? Your car is gone. You know, everything looks different. There's some, you can't put your finger on it, but something's not right. Mm -hmm. My car's gone. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. it scared the bejesus out of me to watch this thing and know that she's stuck. So, um, I don't think we look very different, but we, we've, we've had to, we had to take a little break because, um, a lo- it's just one of these days where like, it's just a crazy day. It's just a crazy day. And we're kind of fitting this video in amongst like, I, I have to work. I've been working today. We had a uh, party at our neighbors that we ran into. So it's like, yeah, it's crazy. And I think you're probably crazy too, Carol. But I am. And I don't remember what the background was last time. Was it my refrigerator? <laughs> I think it was your I'm trying to get back to um, Claire going through. And here's a question I have right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Uh, Spoiler alert, I'm going to discuss something from The Exile, which is the graphic novel version. Oh, okay. Okay, so. Do you think it's ever going to come out that Murtaugh saw her come through? Because in the Outlander book, he did not. Or No, I'm sorry. We did not know this. Right. Because it's not from his perspective, right. but in the exile, we saw that he did Mur- see it. Yes. Murtaugh saw her come through. Right. So, um, yeah, the question is, are we ever going to know that? Or I, I, it's just interesting to wonder about. We didn't see it in the first episode, so maybe it's never going to come up. I mean, I think it can come. It can come up any time. You know, he could be like, I don't remember when. Jamie tells Murtaugh about that to begin with. Um, doesn't he tell him at some point? Maybe he never does. I I don't remember Jamie ever knowing. Well, Jamie, I mean, clearly he finds out eventually, but I don't remember that he told Murtaugh, like, once he knows, you know, what happened. Uh-huh. Because they might have put two and two together. I don't know. I don't remember. Um, one thing I was wondering last night was... How come Claire doesn't hear the stones when she's up there with Frank the first time? You know, I was wondering that too. And I was kind of like, it was because the dancers put some type of. Somebody else said that on Twitter that like the dancers kind of like cast the, the, you know, whatever, or maybe it wasn't like sand, 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 what, what's the festival that it is? Sandheim? Yeah. Bell yeah, train. The it's not Bell train. It's Sanheim, right? The dancers sort of opened the door. It's like Will and Judy went through the portal. What, is that is that what her name was? No, it was Will and um, Holly. Will and Holly went through the portal to the land of the lost, but somebody had to open the door. Yeah, maybe maybe their ceremony is like the ceremonial opening of the door. That's kind of what I figured. And I wonder then if they have to go back in a couple days and ceremoniously, ceremoniously close the door. Right. I don't know. And I have a spoiler that I'm afraid to say, but again, this is... All right, we'll run the spoiler alert at the bottom. I'll figure okay. out how to do it. I'm dying to know what's going to happen with Gillis. I mean, I'm trying to remember. Didn't she go through, like, just, like, how much... How before Claire... Wait, they went back and watched her go through. Yeah, but that's not until Dragonfly. But the Exile one is that she came through with somebody else. 
Oh, they went through and watched her come through again? No, she never went back. No, nobody nobody watched her came through in the exile, but what we did learn in the exile was that she came through with somebody else. Oh, right. 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 And then there was that whole situation in um, Not a Leaf on the Wind. What was the other um, novella? Uh, 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 the Michael and Joan one. Um yeah. My brain is just that. This is what happens when I say up till 1.30 in the morning and Wait. live tweet shit. No. I don't even think it's from that. I think it's from this book, part two, with Roger. Yeah. The guy, wasn't that supposed to be Gilas they were talking about who was in some, like, um, cottage or something and this crazy woman and they knew she was crazy and the guy died and blah, 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 blah. blah. We were kind of assuming that was Gilas. At the end of Dragonfly? No, no, I'm talking now about, oh, God, sorry, I really, get, I'm, I'm into Moby now. Never mind. It's all crashing down. All right, all right, whatever. Anyway, that was a question, um, you know, how did she start hearing it? And maybe that's, that's a good answer. I thought, like, maybe they, they open up the portal. But anyway, right. so she's through to the other side. Okay. Right. All right. Um, and I love how it's, like, kind of quiet, and she's looking around, and she's looking around, and she doesn't see the car, and she's walking around, and she's looking around, and it's all calm. Boom! Every, I've watched this thing three times. One, two, three. Every single time, I'm like, la, 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 la. And she jumps. And so does, so do I. And she, so does Tracy. Yeah. She jumps, and is like, whoa, with the boom. Yeah. And, um... Every single time, I told you, I am just, I'm just amazed at how they were able to do it in such a way that it made me scared for her. Like I know, I, was, I know. Like and that feeling of doom of, oh my God, where am I? Like, what's going on? Where's my car? How do I, I'm not even, oh. But then so, everything about that sequence where she's running, trying to get get away, the music, which is awesome, which sets that, like, like, sort of like bagpipes meets, like, you know, uh, rock. Rockin', um, yeah. rock of ages. Um, and the film, like the, the the cinematography, where it's like a handheld camera, like running after her, and it's all kind of grainy. And right. I mean, right. it feels. I really like that. That a lot of this, the whole series, the whole series. I mean, there was a lot of it in the World War II stuff, and it made sense. But like even here, it's a very journalistic kind of feel, you know, like yeah. that you are there with her, right. and you are like following her as she's running around and whatever. Like it's not just like a pretty shot here and a pretty shot there, whatever. Um, I really like the camera work that they're doing. It's very, like, modern and fresh, you know? Yep. Um, so, that was all cool. And then she bumps into Black Jack. The blackest of jacks. That whole scene was just fabulous. I mean, okay, let's talk about no, him. No, madam, I am not. Oh, He really, honest to God, you can totally get why she's like, Frank, what are you doing? What the F? And then in two seconds later, be like, I'm Jonathan Randall, Esquire. Captain of His Majesty's Ace Dragoons. <laughs> that he can be like, that she can be like, wait, you're not Frank. Because he's not Frank. He doesn't even look like Frank, really. He looks a little bit like him. And this, I just am fascinated by this. Like, like the first time I saw this, I was like, Oh my God! Is he wearing like some sort of prosthetic to make his face look a little fuller or something? Like, like I don't know what it is. I don't know what he's doing. But he looks but, yeah. completely different. I have to like I have to listen to like a, a, an audio clip of him talking as Frank and Blackjack to see what he's doing with his voice. Because I I don't know, but I, I'm just like you know, yay Tobias Menzies. That's all I can say because. It, it, great, 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 great acting and differentiating between the two characters. Absolutely. Okay, let's move on, please. Um, so, okay, so then is it really wrong of me um, the first time I saw it that I, like, just didn't know that it was Marta that, like, knocked out Blackjack? And I didn't know. There's three, you know, there's the three sidekicks. Didn't know who, so it really took me, like, three episodes to be like, okay, that's Marta, that's Angus, and that's Rupert. No, because it's, like, so dark, and everybody's got beards, and everybody's dirty. <laughs> They're all dirty. All these pictures I keep seeing of Jamie, like, you know, she and Jamie talking at, like, the um, stables. I'm like, is he ever going to be clean other than the... <laughs> well, I don't want to say it. 
Here we go again with the spoilers. Um, so yeah, so that so that was all great, and then we've got the cottage. Now, is that cottage that they go to? Is that the Crofter? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I, you're just gonna have to put a spoiler warning. All right, I'm gonna spoil this something thing. here. So, all right, hold on. Is that the Crofter's cottage from later on? I think so. Yes, I was thinking the same thing. I think it is. Okay, okay, we're back um, because it's it's at the foot of the hill. I mean, it's got to be. So we we meet Jamie. Um, it is pretty gross. That shoulder is pretty gross. That's pretty. That's pretty icky. Normally, um, I don't watch stuff like that. Like I'll look away or I'll do my Walking Dead, like kind of through the uh, through the hands. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I found it to be. It's it's about to happen again on my TV, and I'm like. I can't stop watching that shoulder just be all... It's It's cool. It is. Oh, it's very cool. I read somewhere, you know, Ron Moore did, and everybody should read this if they haven't already. He live tweeted the premiere, and um, he, I think it was him that talked about that it's sort of a combination of prosthetics and shots and whatever. Um, But there's also, evidently, and thank you to... Wait, I need to find who... um, was it Connie? I need to find who pointed us in this direction here. Um, hold on a minute. Hold Connie on. sends a lot of videos. No, she... Um, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. I'm sorry. Just here, talk while I find this. Well, instead of me talking, let's let Outlander talk. You must be something of a genie person. Can you hear it? Escape was my chief concern. Yes. I had no idea where I was. I'm trying to find the road back to Inverness and the gathering dark. And you know, I had to say something. I thought it was Connie. Okay, it's Connie. Okay, it was Connie. Connie, like, sent me, look on the Twitter, but Connie sent a link about, I guess, Ron Moore is doing, like, a podcast that's sort of like a DVD commentary for each episode. Oh, right, right, right. You told me that. And I I got, I totally have to listen to that. Um... But anyway, yeah, the, the, um, that was that whole scene was really cool in the cottage. I have to tell you that um, I thought Sam, his acting during this shoulder thing was so fantastic. You truly believe that this man is in agony. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that I was like, right. I was like, wow, he seriously pulled this off. And he has to wince like three different times right, 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 and right. give her the okay. And you, you're just living it with him. Right. You're sitting there in pain with him. Right. And you know just how much it's hurting because, like, think of everything that comes after that where he gets shot and he's, you know, this and that and this and that. And, um, you know, he's like, yeah, whatever. Um, but he, even he in this moment is like, you know, can barely move. Like, you just know he's in some serious pain. The dude gets right. shot later and he's still, like, up and walking around. Right. Um, and you have to give her credit for doing such a great job and, 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 and them. You have to give them credit for showing that Claire, in in whatever crisis she's in, is always going to stop and help someone who needs medical attention. Right. It, even if it means, you know, if it's if it's a threat to her own life, it doesn't matter. She's mm-hmm. not going to sit here and listen to these guys do this. And she, I love how she said they. You hear her say, "I, you know, I, it was probably the not the smartest thing to do." Whatever she says, right. I'm paraphrasing, but. It's so true. Right. She can't help herself. She has to jump in. Right, 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 right. And she knows it. She knows it. Right. Um, that whole scene was hilarious. I mean, I, lo- I love the humor in this. Like, I gotta say, like, the whole, you know, you know, give me, you know, something to, t- to, to, to be a sling or whatever. And uh, was it Rupert or Angus? It was like, oh, well, now she's bossing me around. And Dougal's just like, give me a belt. He says, he <laughs> says, he says, Give me your belt. Give me my belt. Give me your belt, she says. <laughs> and he's like, She's just me bossing me. everybody around. Give me your belt. It. Dougal. Okay, now let's talk about him. Love Dougal. Oh, Love. my God. So good. So, I would do so, whatever he so said. So good. I would seriously do whatever he said. He's, he's, he's like, you can tell he's strong. He is scary in a way. But he's, he's like the father figure. He's awesome. It's really funny you should say that because I was, when I was tweeting last night, it's just like it's so funny how like the three of the the, the Mur, Mur, well not so much Murtaugh but like Angus and Rupert and it is sort of good by the way that they made Angus a slightly bigger part because I think Ru, Rupert really needs somebody to play off of and I think that the two of them together being kind of like you know goofy and goofier 
um, are are a good match because clearly Rupert's not going to play off Marta in that way. He's not going to play off Dougal in that way. Right. So that right. was really smart. I never really knew why Angus was going to get a bigger role. I get it now, and it totally works. Right. Um, but at one point, you know, Dougal, Dougal just doesn't. Dougal just like I what I what I said was um, what I said was. Dougal has no patience for this tomfoolery, laugh out loud. He's like my dad on long car trips. <laughs> Dougal's just like, um, you know what? If I have to pull this horse over one more time <laughs> <laughs> to speak to the two of you. Because like every time they're like, you know, oh, like do this, do that. He's like, just do it and we're leaving. You know, I was like, at one point I was like, now dad, I mean Dougal, is really getting mad. Purgatory Carol and I must be fighting in the car. <laughs> yeah, Dougal just doesn't suffer fools gladly. He really doesn't. Um, he, I just, I love him. He's really imposing. I mean, Graham McTavish is doing a great job. Um, I have to tell you that I was, I do have to mention something I was a little bummed at. Wait. Um, oh, I know what you're going to say. One of my favorite lines of the series is when... Well, this is coming a little later, because they still have to, like, go to Cockabed and Cock 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 whatever rock and get pushed off and, you know, have the whole skirmish. Well, no, because that... Because we can't skip the whole um, Jamie finds Claire part, because that's, like, the best moment that the two of them have. I know. Um, Although I kind of, in a way, wish they would have put him on a Tom Cruise box just for the very first, the, the very first uh, encounter up close, standing there in front of yeah. each other. And you could sort of tell, like when it was a long shot, that they really were trying to like get him to stand a little up uphill and hurdle downhill. I, I mean, I, you know, what are you going to do? I, I know. I what are you going to do? I kind. We both I, talked about this. We kind. I of said missed, it in the beginning yep. of this video that nothing. I have nothing to complain about. No, it's not It's not a complaint because I totally get why they did it. Because you can't have a shot with this and this. You know, you just can't. You just can't. I do kind of, like, miss the whole, like, him being just so big and, you know, just so big, you know? And her, like, feeling really, like... And she's even, like, bigger than everybody else except him and feeling very, like, sort of small next to him. Um... But I totally get it. I get it. I get I get the, the logistical problems. And I get the fact that you just happen to find a great actress who is, you know, tall. So there you go. Whatever. Right. right. Um, All right. So, uh, but that scene, I love, he, here's what Sam Hewen got, like, totally right. He got right the fact that Jamie, I don't know that, like, thinks everything is funny is the right thing because it's kind of not. But just always, like, is able to see the humor and stuff. Or see the lightheartedness and stuff. Or, right. Because right. You know, he's young, too. So you just... He has a twinkle in his eye. He has that, like, you know, well, you know, you're not so big. I can I can probably carry him. He's you know? not jaded. Yeah. He's just very, like, he's a big, you know, friendly St. Bernard. But that's, like, you know... You know, like, he's just, he's got that quality that, like, kids really like him. You know what I mean? What are you looking at? Jamie. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's oh. on my TV. Oh. oh. Um, I totally agree. Yes. Um, yeah, it's, he just, he just, you just know that he's going to, like, pass by, you know, some 1843 kids playing a game of, like, you know, 1843 kickball and be like, Oh, we have five minutes here. I'm gonna just run in and like and join in for a minute. You know, oh, they're gonna they're gonna be rolling the big round wheel thing that yeah, they yeah. He just he he just that's that quality that like that like kind of like always. Oh, I love that! I love when he pushes her off the horse. I love when she tells she warns them about the rock, and then I love that we get a little glimpse of Frank while all this is going on because mm -hmm. she thinks back, and then I love where he and Dougal converse in, in, in the Gaelic for a few minutes, or as somebody recently said, it's supposed to be the Gaelic, whatever. And then he, Dougal yells, whatever he yells, and Jamie goes, Wah! she goes flying. And then he's like, I like Hello? the, the yes, no, no. Oh, no, 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 I get it. No, I love Zoned it. Zoned out. The Tulagar. The Tulagar. How do you say it? Tul 
Tulegar. No, that's not what he yelled. No, he yells it once he pushes her off. He yells it because they're they're fighting. Crime. No, 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 no. I mean, whatever he yelled, whatever Dougal yelled before to to let him know. All right, let's do this. Hmm. Hmm. Um. So yeah. So that was great. So they have the skirmish and they find Claire and bring her back. Mm-hmm. And then 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 he falls off the horse. Then he falls off the horse. That was great. He's going over. Help! Stop! He's going over! <laughs> boom! Um, <laughs> boom. Uh, then, yeah, and I get I get it. I, I know you missed that line, because that is one of your favorite lines about can I Can I say it yet? Yeah, yeah. Do, will you allow me? Yes, I will allow you. Go. Oh, just love it. Bam! You're out of here. Um, when he said, when they, because they, they ended up asking him, can you ride earlier? Mm-hmm. I don't remember them say. I thought they, all I remember was them asking him later, can you ride? And he says, um, I, if you take the lassie off my chest and fetch me a clean shirt. I mean, when I first read this book, I was in tears. I thought it was the funniest thing I had ever heard. And I just love the line. I just think it speaks volumes and it totally bummed me out that it wasn't there. But again, I get it. I get it. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They kind of had to switch things around a little bit. But I did love her in that whole scene. Where she's like, you know, God damn it, like, and the, and all those all the guys are like, yeah. <laughs> Did you ever hear such a lassie? Like, yeah. you know, with such a mouth and, on her. And how about when they know they get attacked? He pushes her up the horse. They get attacked, and she's like, bam, and she makes up. <laughs> because I keep putting myself in her position and saying, okay, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? You're hours from. Craig and Doom, but you've got to get back and you don't know what to do. And, and if you stay with them, you're screwed. But if you leave, you could be screwed. And right. then she takes her chance and just takes off. Right. And you know you're not that far. You know you're not that far. So, yeah. Oh, you, you would absolutely have to take off. Right. Um, so, all right. So, yeah. So, they, so, you know, she cleans Jamie up. It's hilarious. Okay, listen. We're not going with you. Yes, you are. What? You're going to cut my throat if I don't. Why not? But you don't look that heavy. Now, if you won't walk, I shall pick you up and throw you off my shoulder. Do you want me to do that? Hell yes! <laughs> oh, yes. Right, oh my God. God. Every so, time I see it, it gets better, and I have I to go, hell yes. I know, I know, I know. Um... So, yeah, so at that point, then they pretty much just get to Castle Leoc. Why don't we get there? Here, here. Every time you watch it, don't they, like, they walk up and you see the castle and you're like, shit, it's over. I know, right? right. Oh, my God. Um, and there, and that's that episode one in the books. Um, I mean, it, again, it was just, it was like everything I pictured in my head. I mean, like, I really seriously can't think of anything... Wrong with it. I can't think of anything that was missed. I can't think of any nuance that, like, isn't there. Right. You know. Oh, wait. We, we went backwards, though, because he hasn't gone over yet. No, we did. We we went, but no, we, we. He's giving her a wee nip right about now. Oh, I forgot about the wee nip. Um, so, yeah. So, that's it. That's it. And so, now we have episode two on Saturday. Um, the scene, Did you see the scenes? Uh, yeah. Scenes were really good. And it was, like, one of those, like, the whole series kind of thing. So you can kind of tell, like, you know, some of this. Like, he tells her, well, I'll say because it, it's in the scenes. Um, she, like, stay put. You make sure you stay put. And you, and for those of us who've read the book, I won't say what, but we know exactly what that is. We know exactly what that part is. And telling Claire to stay put is equal to telling Claire to take the hell off. Right, right. And I, every time he tells her to stay put, I just laugh. I actually figured out, okay, I figured out where I think they're going to divvy up the eight episodes. Do you want to hear? Where Tracy thinks they're going to divvy up yeah. the eight episodes. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> yes, but first... All right, never mind. All right. This is this is spoilery about the book, so you know, turn it down. Well, like Mark. you're gonna have to do a lot of. 
I know, right? Hopefully I can figure out how to do it. And if not, just like plug your ears and maybe we'll, I meant to have like a little white flag. We could, what? We shouldn't listen to this whole thing on, you know, whatever. Um, Episode seven is the wedding. And that's because the episode is called the wedding. Wait, this is in Tracy's brain. No, this this is for real. Episode seven is called the wedding. So when, what's your take? What? So my take is that episode eight is all about the rescue of Claire from Blackjack. I'll thank you to take your hands off my wife. And then I almost wonder if they will cut it off, like sort of as a cliffhanger, with Jamie about to beat Claire. Do we know when it's coming back? Or... Actually, if they wanted to cut it off at, like, kind of a nicer part or, like, a more, like, like, not so much of a cliffhanger part, they could cut it off uh, at Jamie giving her the ring. Well, I have to crack up because I read an article yesterday. Um, I think I posted it on Facebook about, um, like, something like a feminist view or something and how all men need to watch Outlander. Mm -hmm. And whoever the author was, forgive me, I don't remember, um, had watched the first six episodes. Uh Uh-huh. And I don't believe has read the books because I'm thinking when she gets to the beating, she's not going to be too happy. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Because that's what cracks me up about this series. You have all kinds of opinions from all sides. The feminists will say, how dare they show this? But then they'll also say, Claire's strong and she's great. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it really, it's, it's, it's fantastic because it brings up such, you just have to ponder the whole thing all day long. You'll find yourself at the grocery store going, but how is she going to get out of that? I mean, it's I know, I just know. fantastic. I know. All right. So we're unspoiled. So we can wrap this up because I think we're done. I think um, we are so done. We are. So yeah, we're going to try to do this every Sunday. Um, you know, the, the reason Tracy says try is because we thankfully have social lives So we're not a thousand percent sure we're always going to be home on a Saturday. Right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, we probably, you know, if I'm home and I'm, I'm, I actually kind of liked that whole live tweeting the West Coast version because I'm usually going to be home at midnight on Saturday. I don't stay up that late. Yeah, it's just a little hard to like not go to sleep till twelve till one thirty. But you know, don't look at me. It's it's for the children, you know. (laughs) The only way you're going to get me to do that is if I'm out and I come home. Woohoo! But, but you if know, I'm so, not. so like in terms of live tweeting, that's going to be sort of sporadic, I would say. But we will try to get something up every Sunday. I don't um, even want to live tweet. I want to watch. Well, that's the thing too. I I'm not going to live tweet anything that I'm watching for the first time. If I happen to watch, be able to watch it, you know, before like like if I have if I've already watched it and I'm watching it again, maybe I'll live right. tweet it. Whatever. Right. Um, but we're going to try to do by by you know end of the day Sunday. My, this one probably will not appear till Monday because um, I have more work that I have to get done and we're having people over later. Okay, um, we don't need to discuss it now, but whatever. you can send it to me and I can do it. I can't. I, this this file is like I have to go through my computer and like clean out my computer because I have about like seventy gigabytes of hard drive space left. All right. Well, let's discuss so, that whatever. later. Um, but yeah, we definitely want to do this um, week by week by week. So like. Comment in the video, like, um, you know, what questions that you, that you want to ask us or what, what, you know, what you think about like all the questions we've brought up. Cause we can a- answer people's questions about stuff like in, in a weekly video. Exactly. Or I can put something on a blog where they can put all the comments under that. Right, right, right. Um, Ooh, that's a lovely idea, Tracy. Thanks. Thanks. Yes. It's getting interactive, you know? Um, and that's it. So anything, any last minute things? Oh, we, in, you know, life is pretty good when this is something that's like, um, oh yeah, I almost forgot. But we, we were very happy to be mentioned in Entertainment Weekly this we uh, Entertainment Weekly magazine this week. Um, it's the one with um, uh, Kevin Spacey or uh, Julia Louis-Dreyfus on the cover. Yes, I have to buy that and the TV Guide. Um, I didn't buy the TV guide because we're not in it, you know, so I'll just look at that online. But um, I have a subscription. <laughs> yeah, I, they're on the cover. On. How can you not? Like, well, whatever. No, I'll, I'll probably how, look at the TV guide. How can you guide. not? They're on the cover. I know. Yeah, I'll get it. I'll get it. Um, 
but I get Entertainment Weekly anyway. But so yeah, so we were. They had a list. They have a, of a they have a um, two page spread about all the Outlander books, which is great. That like the point is to binge through the, all of them. And we were listed with Outlander Shop Observations, which is Karen Henry's site, and Outlander Kitchen, which is the lovely Teresa's site, and Outlander Book Club. Go Outlander Book Club girls. We love them. Um, and who else was up there? It was up. Uh, Lollybrock. Was, ladies of Lollybrock. And, la- and Ladies of Lollybrock. The it's funny because on the one hand, I'm like, wow, you know, it's nice that all of us old timers are being recognized. And then I crack up thinking, yeah, Ladies of Lollybrock are like, go away. We are the official. We are the original. They've what? been around ladies a long time. This is, your, this is Ladies of Lollybrock speaking. You're not speaking to them. No, no, I'm saying they're probably like, yeah, Carol, you're not as much of an old timer as we are. We've been around the longest. Um, so congratulations to everybody for that. It's quite the honor. Um, and that's it. I'm going to go do some more work now. And, right. um, you know, think about pouring a glass of wine in a couple hours. <laughs> We should have waited and done this then. I will, I will admit that in the interim between parts one and two of this video, I did have just like a little wee nip because we were at a party next door. So, you know, what are you going to do? Which is maybe why I'm sleepy now. I don't know. I had frozen yogurt. Well, you're like, woo! <laughs> you're getting the sugars hitting you. Yeah, so. All right, guys. It's been fun. And we will see you next week. And we'll see you tomorrow, chat. And, uh... Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.